Shalom, hello, and welcome to the Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Byron Rogers. This podcast is dedicated to the executive protection practitioner, the private security professional. In this podcast, we're going to talk about the mental, emotional, psychological, physiological fitness that goes into being an efficient and effective executive protection agent. Whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're a mom that's looking at how to protect her children or a father that's focused on how to protect his family. I believe this podcast has something for all of you. We might even get into some tales from the crypts of true Hollywood stories from time to time. I'm doing this podcast because I feel the reality of this job is simple. If you really want to be good at executive protection, it's more than just a job. It really is a lifestyle. And those of you who've been in the game for any serious amount of time, you already know what I'm saying is true. So if that sounds interesting to you, Enjoy the show. Out. And if you haven't already, get your tickets for the Protector Symposium. The first annual Protector Symposium is taking place in Riverside, California, November 15th and 16th. We've got an all-star lineup of seriously elite trainers, Yosef Badu, Ed Caldrone and Mike Pannone are all going to be there teaching and instructing us on, well, our common goal, how to make good people more dangerous. So no matter what your background is, you're going to learn skills around the one unifying principle of protection. Get your tickets. Uh, Spots are going quickly. And remember, you're going to get over $100 worth of value back in different things that you're going to get from our sponsors with your purchase of a ticket. Check the website out, Byron Rogers Motivation, for ticket information and to learn more. Out. Boom. Hey, what's going on, you guys? Byron Rogers here with another episode of Executive Protection Lifestyle. I'm excited about this one because I'm doing it a little bit. We're doing it a little bit different. Uh, Today, I have Luke Agajanian. You know, my dude, we, my road dog, we do, we do, you know what I'm saying? And then I've got a Scott here and Brendan, both of which are with 511. So it's an honor to be here. Hang with y'all. Yeah, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, Likewise. Likewise. Like it's, it's hyping it up like it's an honor. Like we're psyched to have you here. Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. So just real quick before we get going, uh, why don't you just introduce yourself and what you do and all sure. that stuff. Uh, my name is Brendan Rin. I've been with the brand for seven years. I am the category manager for footwear, so I handle uh, anything that goes on your feet. It comes across my desk, and I work with an awesome team of guys, and we uh, try to just make uh, the best footwear in this market. Awesome. Scott, Scott Lambert, uh, seven years at 511 as well. I work as a senior industrial designer on our design team, uh, mainly serving our load bearing category, which is packs, bags, luggage, and load bearing gear that you're familiar with. It was like awesome to meet the guys that are responsible for the stuff that we've been rocking yes, for yes. like all of these years. Um, I can't wait to go into like some of the stuff that I've been rocking that uh, you know I've got underneath this table. <laughs> uh, just to talk about man, because like you guys have been making our job a lot easier uh, for sure. So and then my man Luke, we work together on the road. We do all kinds of stuff. Yes, together. and I've been doing the five eleven thing since two thousand. Four, yeah, 2005, something like that. And I got. It all started with this right here. Y'all don't know about this. Half y'all don't know anything about this. <laughs> with this. Oh, look at that! that right, is, right here. The fish started, is, no, but the fishing started started for a lot of people. Right and there. I still have it because it's what I use, like IDPA. Yeah. And you know, anytime I need like a concealment vest, and you know, it's got that quick snap. I mean, and if you're going to the right countries, it's actually not a bad idea. It's, it it <laughs> used to be really very functional. Like, yeah, it was really functional, but, um, you know, and, and kind of yeah, like, yeah. like something we've talked about so much is like, you know, the brands changed so much and, and it was like kind of a faux pas. And, you know, like we were sharing old photos of us in 511s back in like, I think that's like 2007 or eight, something yeah, like that, that picture. Easily a decade ago. And, nice. you know, it's nice. like, wow, look at us. And then, you know, we have photos now maybe you can put them in here on the video yeah, I will. you guys I'll are watching the video there, yeah. but uh you know where it's like oh like my my clients ask me all the time like i had the very first pair of pants i i bought coming back to it was the strike pants sure and they're still my favorite go-to pant and uh you know the first time i showed up with that dark charcoal pair my boss was like is that g-star <laughs> and I'm like, i was like what did you just say like, yeah. i was stoked i was like no it's not 
but now but I know I can wear good. this <laughs> anywhere I want to with you. Right. And and you know it's it has style. It has it has a, a design to it. I don't yeah. look like you know that kind of cliche. You know, ten twenty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. To, we used to do so. It's you kind of went. You guys sort of went from a brand for us starting off with it. Where I mean. We get teased if we're wearing it. Like we didn't yeah, wear that anywhere man. but work. Yeah. In another country. <laughs> and it much. was it was a thing, you know. Yeah. Like we would be sitting in our detail, like trying to look as kind of low pro and kind of smooth as we can, and we'd see somebody walk in and they'd be like, kind of tacked out, and it's not the venue for it. And so, like overseas contracting, solid. Do your thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. But executive protection, I'm trying to hang with a civilian, it was a little high friction. So we'd see that and be like, oh, these guys, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, no. And All clients see the same thing. So like, it's literally why I wanted to like meet with y'all and talk to y'all is because the new face of 511 is what I've been excited about. And now I've been able to do all my shopping with you guys here at 511 and still hang with my clients, still be like, there's like like ten twenty out. It's like ten uh, being ten twenty out is like a new thing now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying like now it's much more. Like I'm, I'm wearing a your jeans. I have your socks on. <laughs> I have your underwear on, which are amazing, and the copper socks. Like that was kind of a life changer for me. For those of you who travel, pro tip: check out the break copper it, socks. Down for them. They last. Those they don't get things stinky. are amazing, and they don't get stinky. And I can like wash them in a sink and hang them up and. Or just not wash them for a few days. Yeah. Totally fine for some odd weird reason. Yeah. Um, so if you're nasty like me, I mean, you can you can do that. But or you're on the road and you know like you're in a hotel and you're like, yo, if I give these people my clothes, we might have to leave before I get them back. And you're yeah. like, and it happens when you're traveling and working. Yeah. And you're like, yo, I gotta I gotta figure this out real quick. And you're hanging everything in the bathroom. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's solid game. But yeah, I want to talk about like the new face. You know, the changes you guys have been making. It's like the softer side of Sears. It's like a much more. 100%. That's a fight. Softer side of Sears, man. And I feel like you guys, you guys still have kept close to your your core, you know, yeah. and your core fan base, and you have you have those products for them. Yep. Um, but you just updated them with different fabrics, you know, the whole like stretch thing for me, like the rip stop stretch stuff, and then yeah. what you're doing with these jeans is like, oh, like it's it's amazing for me, but. You still have that, but then there's a style where, like, you know, guys that are maybe into that, like, surf skate culture dig it, or, you know, even some of the high fashion stuff, they, they end up digging that as well. Like, like if I wear these jeans with Jordans and one of your uh, button-up shirts, I don't have it here with me, I look cool. Like, <laughs> you know? Like a normal person. Like yeah, that. but everything's... You know, it's all uh, highly functional. Yeah, it has a lot of high function, and it's, it's useful, it's cool. It, uh, it looks cool, and um, the stuff just is really, like, I can't buy enough stuff here. I spend copious amounts of money mm -hmm. in this store that we're in. And we're live right now, guys, like, so that's why you'll see people walking around in the back sure, right. and such. But, but real quick, like, unless you have, do you have something you want to say on that? Oh, uh, no, I mean, it's funny when you say, like, the softer side is here. It's like, it's kind of, it's one of those interesting things is, like, we always have the dynamic inside the company is that there's, that we have these kind of, this is kind of the consumer-based side. And we take this just as serious as we take the, our professional side, and that that business, like, I mean, we don't want to, we're not going to probably tell the numbers here, but is massive for us. Like, if you carry it, like we were talking before, if you carry a badge, you carry a gun, you know this brand. Mm -hmm. uh, or for the military, you know what kind of what we're always been about. And um, so this is, I mean, this whole other side of it is is a lots of fun, and it's a way for us to kind of flex and show that, like, hey, you know, are you? You guys are multifaceted people. Like you know, obviously, not just you know, a cop's not just a cop. They're right. also a dad. They're also they go to church. They also literally parent. They also go to the beach. Like there's other sizes of our person. So like, and for us, we're like, we're, if we want to really cater to that person, we need to give them all the use occasions we can. Heck yeah. So that's one of the interesting things for us is like, you know, we don't we, we make some of the world's best uniforms hands down. We can we can probably I'm sure there's people probably be to some ugly comments right now saying <laughs> that like, there's beats ours, but once yeah. you, like we do that for it, and we we want our guy and guy and girl to trust us for 12 hours or 24 hours or whatever shift they're doing, and we want them to trust us. Then we also want to make sure they understand that we get you the rest of the time that you're not in that uniform. Like, yeah, and that's a and it's a I think a big portion like a big point of pride for us as a brand is that like. 
we're serving those who serve others. Like it's mm-hmm. a, it's a, it's a, like it's great. Like when it's awesome to hear from because we're always we always kind of drink our own Kool Aid. Like yeah, we make great stuff. And like okay. what's great <laughs> also when people come in that actually use the stuff on a daily basis and use it from that kind of what we call the guardian side of the point of view is like. Yeah, we love it because it is highly functional, and I look cool. I can still, right. I can still score checks if I need to. Right. right? Yes. And that's what I was digging. It's <laughs> yes. like, my civilian gear now is more durable, and now I look cool, but right. I get that same durability yep. that yep. I can like literally go you know, out to South Africa with a client for weeks and be outside and still have that hang. Totally. You know? And from a design perspective, I mean... You say 1022. There's a couple of different looks to a 1022 now. Now there is. Yeah, and some yeah. of the subjects that we're about to get into, it helps you as a designer bury some of those subjects, features, and make some of those consumer-facing, you know, sexy items. But they're actually really duty-driven in yeah. serving that customer. Which is our world. That's right. our world. Our world is civilian. I'm hanging with you. I look like a. Like some clients want you to be like the bodyguard and be overt, but a lot of mine is more like I'm hanging with you. We're cool. You know, if I need to be your executive protection agent, then I can show up as that. But like, I don't want to draw attention to myself right, right. because it's going to draw attention to us. And Absolutely. then we have a more high friction environment. We got to get the work done. Right. And no one, yeah. And that's something you, you got to try to. It's not about me. Yeah. yeah, yeah you're <laughs> trying to keep it like, like as every trend, like everything as mellow as possible. So right. It's interesting. Like, it's right, I mean, it's interesting. Like, I mean, a lot of times you goof around, you think you're designing for like a James. Like James, like I grew up watching James right. Bond movies. My dad. Like, yeah. From like. And you always kind of, there's a lot of times we get projects here and you look at it and you're like, you kind of feel like Q, not that we're, we're near <laughs> That's school. so cool. Was no, what they do, like but Q, you yeah. kind of feel like you're like, okay, so like, how do you make this? And sometimes things are overtly, like, you take that extra step and like, and it's funny, like some people say like, oh, your guys' stuff is so overbuilt. And then we're like, well, you know, and you hear that from some people and you're like, well, you know what, the, the guys and, and the women we talk to that live, they live through this stuff actually yeah. like, no, it's fine. It's, it, it got me home. It got me through the situation. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. not overbuilt. It's built how I need. So it's, right. it's an interesting time. I have the same pair of strike pants. When did the strike come out? 2012, 13? Yeah. So I think I bought them. So kind of my brief history with coming back to 511 was I, you know, I, my office is across the street from the ready room. So like a cop buddy of mine was like, oh, dude, you should go check out the ready room. I'm like, what's that? He's like, oh, it's like a tactical store. I didn't know it was a 511 store. Mm-hmm. So I came over here, brought the dog, parked in the parking lot, and I let the dog out to use the bathroom real quick. And this, you know, short kind of jacked redhead guy walks up to me and says, hi. And that guy was Tom Davin. <laughs> and I didn't know it at the time. I had sure. no idea, you know. And then I later became friends with him and realized, like, what a great, you know, human being he is. And he was just like, yeah, this is the 511 ready room. And I'm like, Wait, what? 511? I'm like, oh, dude. He's like, no, no, go check it out, man. <laughs> and he, like, he walked me in here. No idea he worked for the company. Never no idea he was, like, the CEO at the time of the company. Yeah. I'm talking about this. And then, like, he, I got those gray, those charcoal strike pants. I still have the same pair. Mm-hmm. And, you know, something I was going to kind of say with that, like, I don't necessarily have multiple sets of clothes. Like, what I'm wearing right now is what I'm going to go be very overt in in about, you know, three hours yeah. here. Right. And then I can take it off and go to Jack in the Box or go yep. in and out burger with the wife and, you know, yeah. right. have a burger and look normal. Like, right? Like, so, literally, I'm going to do that. Like, like, my uniform so, now is what I wear every day. So, yeah. You know, because the clothes are so durable. I'm literally going to, like, change my shoes, throw on another 511 shirt. These pants are going to be with me in, like, full kit in a few hours and I'll be running around and doing what I gotta do and that's yeah. you know that's that's what we appreciate about it a real transition yeah right exactly that's the way that's that's the way I like it man so noob question boot question question I know a lot of y'all have I know you do what's 511 stand for <laughs> I know. I'm just asking for you guys. I have no idea. I, I, you know, I'm asking for everybody. <laughs> I've never known. Yeah, I'm saying because you guys, you know. I think it's Scott. Is Scott's. He's is a Scott. Sure, sure, sure. Craig, Craig. Where, Craig. where, yeah, where it all started is with a company called Royal Robbins. Okay. Um, that is sort of the parent company to 511 Tactical. Uh, parent meaning it was born out of it. Um, okay. So Royal Robbins, the the individual who the pant is named after and the brand is named after at the time, yeah, is uh, rock climber in Yosemite and 
Oh, he is a this forward, badass <laughs> alpha dude. Really? And Heck he, yeah! We need more of those. He guys. sees so awesome. a wall of granite in Yosemite Valley, and yeah. he says, "I'm going to be the first person to get to the top of that." Okay. Okay. So okay. in order to do so, he had a crew of guys who also went on to start notable companies, but. Basically, most important is his wife, Liz, yeah. sewed up his first pair of pants to climb that wall in. Legit wife. I dig that. That's we, what's up. Well, yeah, fast forwarding. We know, we know he accomplished it. We know he did it. We know the pants lasted. Out of that was born uh, Royal Robbins, the brand, and, okay. and the 511 yeah. pant. And this is all because the rating of the climb at the time was a 5.11 grade. Now, five scale means that you're on an incline that it requires you to use your hands and legs to climb up it. Okay. Most likely, and hopefully for you, some some rope assistance, some anchor assistance. Exactly. Um, that five scale starts all the way down at five zero, which is basically just an incline. Yeah. Uh, and it goes all the way up to 5.11 at the time in the 1960s, right then. 511 was the most impossible climb known to man. Really? I did yeah. not know that. 511 pant. This was the apex, pun intended. That's when I was climbing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of the entire, the apex. Of the entire climbing world at the time. So have you started, yeah. thought of doing like a 514? So no, this point, I think we're a 514D or something I, like that. I looked it up today just out of curiosity, and it was a 515D is where we've gotten to, somewhere in France. But yeah, Charma. Separate of us now. Yeah. So I think 516 will be coming up, but we are existing here. In the 511, the impossible, we're doing the impossible, yeah. and uh, that is where the pant got its name. So, when 511 was born as a company, the first product um, coming over from Royal Robbins was that pant. Was so that pant? Henceforth, yeah. And that's that how they, they built the whole. <laughs> you guys built the whole thing around that pant. Yeah, the, at the time, the owner of it, he had he bought Royal Robbins from Royal Robbins, um, and he sold back Royal Robbins to Royal Robbins. And he took the 511 line, the small condensed line, he took it out of the brand and kept it for himself. And Royal Robbins went on to keep trucking along. They're still, if you go see it, they're still in outdoor stores. They're still doing really well. Okay. Um, and he, I think at the time, the ownership just was like, hey, you know, this smaller brand, I, I get what this yeah. is. At the time, it kind of connected. There was a connection between 511 and the FBI and then kind of the law enforcement world. He, the ownership at the time understood that. They under, they weren't trying to try and, try and chase fashion. They're going to try and chase function. And that made sense to them. So they're like, all right, like this, this could be something for law enforcement. So I'm going to take this very condensed line of like four or five products, like that vest, pair of pants, I think like, what else? There's like... Like these really, these the really short like shorts. Oh gee, oh yeah, yeah like spank me's. Yeah. They, they were the spank me. They were wearing like the Silk, Marine Corps. I don't know what y'all call them. Silky. Not sure we have those me. right away. But uh, you know, <laughs> well, they, well they had those shorts. They had those for like the training guys, and then yeah. yes, the yes, line. the canvas. And that started, and then it kind of branched out, and then you know from there it went. You know, it was part of the FBI tra like academy and. And then when it was working with those guys, it's more people got more eyes on it because everyone yeah. from the world comes to the FBI Academy to train and to Heck learn yeah. into the. So that kind of how it kind of started to snowball, and like you said, like the contractor work, or then the guys overseas, and then it just all kind of went from there. Heck yeah, Good. awesome. What's your guys is like? Uh, what's like your mission statement? Like, kind of, who are you aiming to serve? You know, like. We have like there's because it feels like it's like expanding. It's expansive. I, I th it's expanding. I think because I think the interest in people becoming, uh, I think well one self aware of kind of like their environment, what's going on, and just prepared. I think that's yeah, like, I think that's that true. mentality nowadays. It's more and more. It's um, we do have a mission statement that talks about. I think Scott, you have it. Hey, you just memorize it if you want, but it's uh, we are innovators who make purpose-built gear for the most demanding missions. But I think most where Brandon's missions. getting to is that we basically serve professionals who serve others. Awesome. We're we're here not not to protect those who serve, so to say, but they're protecting us, and in turn, we're serving them with the best professional product that is built for those missions. Heck yeah! And we can only do that by listening to individuals like yourself. Uh huh. Well, it's an honor. I think so. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, that's what's up, man. No, it's, uh, I will say there was one 
yeah. piece of gear we'll talk about here where I was like, these guys have got to be inside my head. <laughs> and it's those, those uh, I don't know what you guys call them, man. These pants right over here. I got them on. Oh, black, yeah. yo. You just grab me a couple, a pair of those right quick. I'm green pair. I'll show them. All right, fine, fine, fine. I wear a lot of green, y'all. No. <laughs> these guys. Yo, so these bad boys, the, uh, what is this? This is the new Bravo. Indoor Flex, the yeah, new Bravo, new Bravo pant. pant. So these bad boys right here, I used to rock nothing but Lululemons on the daily, right? Sure. So Lululemon was like my little like hybrid in between spot where like the gear would fit me and have the stretch I need and have the, uh, it would like, you know, not get stinky. Like I could sweat in it, I could work in it. Um, so Lululemon was my jam and they make these golf pants that I was rocking like all the time. But then you guys went and created these and I don't know if I'm gonna wear another pant for like. <laughs> here, for like here. The, you know, I think you because showed like, up at the office with like five of them. Yeah, one day. Man, I was like, like what I are you like, doing? He's like, I'm, I'm committing this forever. Is like, okay. because <laughs> for me, like, what I like about them, like, it's the 511 pant configuration, right? I mean, pocket configuration. So I have the extra sneaky pocket here, pocket, yeah. you know, for like a mag or for my cell phone, depending on what we're doing. You know, I've got the total stretch, like. You know, I'm not, you know, for us guys, like, you Absolutely. know, you got the movement and you need where you need to move me. You know what I'm saying? That's Firing does say. squats. It's you know, you got to check them. You know what I'm saying? I can do full squats in these things. I can do everything I want. The angles of the pockets are like perfect for just sliding my hands down into them. So it's like, and then it's like the Lululemon, almost kind of like the same material, sure. but more durable and it breathes better. The so, stretch in the yeah. Yeah, dude. So this was like, for me, this was like a grand slam. I'm extremely thankful for this right here. So yeah, that was one item I, I had to bring up, man. The uh, and I don't really want to talk about them on here because now everyone's gonna be wearing them. <laughs> so this is really unsafe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is really unselfish of me. You know what I'm saying? But yo, know, with the Bravo pant, is that what these are? Yep. Yep. Check them out. They're amazing. Uh, that's my number one pant. And the jeans, I think Luke can talk more about the jeans. But yeah, we'll get to that later. You okay. know. Let's see here. So why retail locations? Everyone's buying stuff online uh, these days. Um, is there anything you guys want to say about your retail locations specifically? Other than they're like suddenly everywhere. Other than right they now? seem to be yeah <laughs> popping up everywhere. Uh, yeah, I think the thing for us is that I, I know that you know everyone did, we do have a pretty robust e-com business, and we can always check yeah. online. That carries our, like all of our like a majority of our products. First, I think is about the experience. Yep. I yeah. think when we started the stores was just like, especially this store right here when we built this was the idea that this this market for you know for this side of the business, not the professional side, is being so underserved. Um, and we kind of thought like if we we're gonna if we were going to try and you know we we, have, we part with a lot of professional like blue goods around the world and you know for us it's like you, we always want to try and put more in there and but you know, we understand too what they understand who their customers and what they can sell and what they can really stock and for us it's like how do we service like you guys and how do we kind of create our own venue and tell our story and the, the, at the time it made the most sense to kind of look at our own retail locations and it started pretty slow and then that snowball started going real fast, and I think right now we're at 54, 55? Some, somewhere around 55. Wow. 55 locations Blown around up. Canada, uh, the United States, and around the world. And then, um, yeah, it's, and for us, it's just um, going to those areas. It, it's, it really comes from demand. I mean, for yeah. guys that are just like, and the thing is, like, um, you know, we had, there's all the analysis people do these days on, like, your stores and how much time people stay in there and your, you know, all this kind of real analytics with it. And we we're finding that people are coming, you know, people coming to our stores, you know, traditional guys, like, if you go to the mall, I don't know if you guys, but, like, I go to the mall with my wife and three kids, like, I can't get out of there fast enough. Like, I don't want to Yeah. Like, I, I don't want to <laughs> Yeah, be, like, I don't want to be there. Like, walking kind of, around, yeah, you bump, wasting time. Yeah, time and money and... And someone can and, shoot the place up. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> wow. <yeah. laughs> That's exactly. a good possibility, well, totally possibility. <laughs> but and there's a couple we, reasons. <laughs> and then you come down to, and we were kind of seeing the data, like guys, like guys at the mall, like you're in and out. Guys are like very mission oriented. Like mm -hmm. I'm coming for deodorant and toothpaste. I'm in and out of CVS. I'm not going to go anywhere else at all. Yeah. Um, so there, there's some crazy statistics or analytics about like guys being in stores for like five minutes, and then they had analytics for us and guys coming to our stores 
and it's on average like 35 to 40 minutes in the store. Right. I know I'm guilty of it. I'm yeah. so guilty of it. So and I think it's I think it's one experience and one that you're like, oh, this is the stuff I've always wanted. Yeah. And like, and then also you can touch it and you can feel. It. That's one thing I think that it's kind of like the difference between like e-com versus some people want it instantaneous. You want I want this tomorrow. I like you know boop, like whatever. Like Amazon's going to be less than 24 hours by 2020. You're going to get it within like three hours. Like, right. Yeah. It's the drone's going to show up and they're going to know all your analytics. But there's still a sense that you want to be able to go check it out guys like to explore we want to go check i want to see what you guys have to offer and i think so like you said when you guys came here like yeah we i mean there's so much of stuff you don't see in the store yeah guys come in and they're just like dude it looks like a 511 like when i was walking with them back in the halls yep. back there i was like this looks just like a, you would imagine 511 looks like it's like yeah. a 511 right yeah it's just little, like i made the 511 heaven you know what I mean? like right. i uh I'll, i can attest that i would not be the customer I am without the store. Yeah. Sure. And every time I come in, and, and you and I have completely different styles, you know, yeah. but like I had something that you dug. It was that first button up short sleeve shirt. Mm -hmm. You were like, ooh, I like this. Yeah, this is like my, you know? yeah. So then you come in, and then we have different styles. We have different takes on things. We're built completely differently, yeah. you know? And for me, like, for example, the jeans that he was talking about, I'm weird with jeans. I have, I'm 6'4, 230. Most like, cool jeans don't fit me but right. i have to go i have to try them on and they're either going to work or they're not yeah you know and i started to get to places where i'm going and buying jeans for 200 some odd dollars like you know a g-star pair or something like that sure. and uh you know but being able to so when you say oh we're coming out with jeans no they're not going to fit me because <laughs> every pair of jeans i've ever bought you didn't fit me. You know? jeans are gonna fit you. i'm able to come in here see the jeans try them on and I think that first day I bought like one of each, yeah. like color and size that you yeah. guys had, or color, you know, and style that you came out with. So I wouldn't have been the proponent of it, and I don't think he would have either, because he might see something that works for me, and he's like, "Well, that's not right. going to work for me," yeah. right? you know, because we have different styles and tastes and what we like to wear at work and casually, you know. Yeah. So, um, any, you know, still today I'll buy something here, and it doesn't work for Byron, but. The fact that we can come in, have a storefront, try it all on, right. see the quality in our hands, and yeah. see it there, that's where, you know, you've made a huge customer out of sure. me personally. Yeah. That's really, yeah. and that's, you know, and that's awesome. I mean, and, and you're one of many guys that come in that it's. it's I think it's finally this is. I won't say this is Toys R Us for like. No, but it kind of is. It kind of like, feels it's that way like for guys. Gun shops and here <laughs> are kind of the only places yeah. I, I get that same like woo when I walk yeah. in the door, you know. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to talk about like how like how even like you're like oh i don't because i have thighs i'm not like the, the heroin chic guy from la yeah like, right 400 dollars jeans it's like, like <laughs> I th that's something interesting about this brand too because it's really is built around like men, us understand like, yeah working us, men yeah working guys that, like, and women that like hey this is yeah. built to perform like well, it's not i'll never forget we brought our mutual friend uh jeremiah in mm. here and jeremiah is a six foot one bodybuilder and he's yeah. a big huge strapping recon marine good you luck know? Yeah, next thing i know I think the, it was or Paris. Hello, if you're out there, mm -hmm. she still works for Five Eleven. But um, Paris was like, "Hold on a second. She went in the back and grabbed a couple people from Design. They came over, start mm -hmm. measuring Sipes. Next thing you know, it looks like Sipes is getting measured for a suit, and they're just like, you know, very. Stupid. What do you like? What do you want? You know. Yeah. And next thing I, I want to say was like five or six months later, she hit me up and was like, "Hey, is your friend still around? We want to get him a pair of pants to try out." You know, for a guy built like him. Sure. Awesome. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, yeah, like, amazing. you guys saw a problem and we're like, oh, we need to address this type of human who's giant. Who exists know. and is out there in the game whipping it on, man. Yeah. You yeah. know, because uh, I remember I had the exact opposite uh, experience once when I was, I think I was like shopping like structure when I was little and I was like, yeah, I want to be like, you know, cool and chic like everybody. And I remember trying some pants on and they were like, and I was like, man, these are so tight on my legs. Do you guys have a bigger over. size? <laughs> and they were like, we don't have anything. I think it was, or is it Zanga or something like that? And they're Zara. like, Zara. Yeah, yeah, Zara. They were like, you're, you're, you're we don't Spanish fit. Right? Yeah. They were like, we don't have anything that doesn't fit on the mannequins. And I was like, I will beat your mannequin. <laughs> I'll break you up. No, I was like, okay, okay. Noted. I never came back to that store right, ever right. again, you know? So. so with these store locations, you've also started the whole 511 Academy. You guys want to go into that real quick? quick kind of what was the idea behind that and um i just think it's another way to service our guys it's the idea of like how do you how can you educate oh, not even our guys but how do you have that more connections because you 
especially with the stores, you have so many people that might not be in this, like, they enjoy this world, or they're yep. very interested in this world, and they want to have more connection to it or be more prepared. So I think that was a big component. It's like, hey, we have a venue. Uh, yeah, the demographics. The demographics. Yeah, yeah. pe- pe- like I mean, it is fascinating. When e- this store especially is different because we have a lot of local law enforcement come in, and it's kind of hidden, but... You know, when you go to any of our other stores, the people that come, the walks of life that you see through the store, it's it's amazing because it's not, it's not just like this is this is our prototype. Just guy. cops are here. Yeah, ju- there's only cops. Now, granted, there is a, a large group of cops Heck there. Yeah. But then you have fire, you have EMS, and you have people who are just interested you in the have. brand. Yeah, it could just be anything. Yeah. To, to your first comment, it, the the first part, it's a product experience. There's an intimate relationship that you want to tangibly touch that yeah. product, trust it, get excited, pay for it, walk away with it. You, you've made a good decision. Then there's the brand experience that Brendan talked about and building those communities around those stores. This is, like Brendan said, a special store, but there is a community of mutual aid between departments that I watch happening yeah. in this store where officers are trading thoughts, cards. concepts, ideas, cards, exactly. And it's and it's that reverberating outwards into you know other stores where they might not serve as big of a law enforcement base, but they are creating that tactical experience, that awareness that Brendan spoke of for those new customers to 511 that want that brand experience that have never even had some kind of duty or service job but they want to be self-sufficient themselves Heck yeah, yeah. No, and i think your up. reach out to crossfit really brought a lot of different people in too like yeah. I, i've met people in here you know kids be like how do you like those shoes you know i'm like oh they're they're great you know here's what i like about them and you know one of the kids was like yeah i love 511 i'm really into you know, this crossfit guy right. Well, you know, and now he's training to be an EMT and sure. wants to be a paramedic. You know, it's like he's like, so I already wore the stuff, but now I have to buy a uniform, and that's what he was in here yeah, yeah. buying at the time. Yep. You know, yeah, but I mean, totally different demographic, but still well, along the same lines as that. Like, but it is and first it's funny, it, it really it, it is and it isn't. Like, with the first we went to the first CrossFit Games, it was in Car- when we as a brand went to Carson, and it was a fascinating thing because we were the new little guy on the block, and we weren't allowed to have a certain size booth and. And it was crazy because we had, we had probably it was probably like a ten by ten uh, easy up. It was small, and I think like we had to se- they had to send a U-Haul truck up t- from that was Carson, California, up back to um, Modesto twice that weekend to fill it with gear. Wow! But the thing is, because our and they started emptying the local store, didn't they? They emptied. Oh, yeah. They, yeah they, that's why we started a store in Carson originally because that was <laughs> to service the games. So when that store opened, the games were at the same time. You're driving to the games. You stop in right at the store and check it out. And like, and for us, and that was an awesome opportunity. But originally, the connection was. I mean, CrossFit is just it's an it's an intense work functional workout to get you ready. Like, and it is really from special forces and law enforcement that really kind of helped move that forward. Mm-hmm. So when they saw when they saw us at the CrossFit games, there was. A, it was funny, the, the, now the audience that knew about us already versus the ones that are like, I'm just here for rogue fitness and working out, and versus the guys that are like, and guys and girls that are law enforcement, military, they're like, oh my God, my favorite brand mm-hmm. is yeah. here. Now, my favorite thing to do outside of work and my favorite brand's here. Like, and we had, it, I, it was unbelievable. Like, the first show, like, I, we had so many guys through and, and ladies that pull out their car like, hey, I, I love your brand. I am, um, and you just name, you can name what it, like we met one lady who's like Las Vegas PD, like, and she spent like half an hour talking about being Las Vegas PD, which, which is awesome. like yeah. zombie land crazy stories of yeah. being a cop there. <laughs> yeah. But she's like, yeah. And then every year <laughs> passed, our booth grew bigger and bigger, and the audience and our consumers and our our customers and our people just they come to the booth like, oh my god, like you guys are here. And then it'd just be funny. It's just a great connection for us. And and so many guys do. I mean, it's it it, it seemed like it was a, a new group. But when you actually looked at that, right, like so much of the CrossFit community is like, oh, I wear your stuff all the time. Like, I don't know how many people walk through and be like, oh, I have. They start listing off stuff that, like, just the, the, what they wear every day or what they usually use. And you're like, oh, my God, like, yeah, this is an easy connection for us. Yeah. Okay. Heck, yeah. What? So the 511 Academy, what exactly is it? So, like, yeah, break it down. Like, uh, well, it's like, I, 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 go so, ahead. So for uh, marketing works with our different stores. And they sit up in different regional areas, and they, it's more of an education. If it might be from uh, EMT or safety training, seen or, some EP one. I think Aaron Malden did something on EP. Yep, and there's, I mean, there's things. So it kind of the topics that our guys are looking for, something like a higher level education, or just become better at it. Uh, awesome. It could be something from 
you know, trauma training to self-defense to anything along those lines. And the, the marketing's done a really great job of kind of checking out the store, talking with the local PD or the local people that can supply it, and then they kind of build a program around it. So sweet. So so then you, you build a program around it, and then local anyone can come. Yeah, anyone and can. It's yeah. Funny. Yeah. Open, it's open and right now I, I don't know if we I haven't been to one in a while I don't know if we're charging or it's, or it's open and we take care of the bill and yeah. people are welcome to come in and it's all walks of life and like hey I, like hypothetically you know I want to become more prepared in case something happens like the next earthquake the, yeah California perfect this summer right. we had a we had a couple of nice ones this summer <laughs> right, here. Right, going for a couple of rides you know? yeah and you and you kind of it kind of that kind of wakes a lot of people up and also yeah. makes you like hey like I want to know what to pack what right. how my house should be or what should I have for a car or how should I prepare for this so like some people and you know some people go online and some yeah. people track it down like oh you know what I need to do I need to be 511's having a whole class on this like I'm gonna go heck yeah and they walk in and they learn about it for a couple hours and they kind of get a little better grasp of that like say that's what it is and yeah then, and they also understand that this. What they also start. They it's their entry into the brand. Like, oh, these guys actually make all the uniforms. So if something goes wrong, right? These guys are making most of the uniforms. So the guys are going to show up to my house, <laughs> right? And they make gear so I can be prepared and ready to do this. So it's uh, once again one of those kind of logical conclusions that, but that world of being prepared and like yeah. always be ready is our you know our moniker. And and the thing about that is that like you'd be surprised how many people want to be prepared. Yeah, like, heck yeah, especially after they get shaken up. You know, shake it up, or like, or just life experience. Like yeah. it's it's one of those things that people are like, yeah, I want to be, I don't want to be a victim, or, right? Or I, I want to be if something goes sideways. I want to I want to be on the right side of this. I want to be getting out of this. I don't want to yeah. be the one who's victimized. You know, <laughs> yeah, I mean it's the it's, one who they're picking up afterwards. Right, right. No, oh, that's good, man. No, I totally dig it. And is the Five Eleven Academy? So it's held inside the stores now. I've seen like a video you guys just did with. Uh, Ah, uh, help me, the seal who just did like a hundred deadly skills. Uh, um, that's right. a cool book, by the way. Yeah. you guys were giving it, it away. It was a cool book. Like that. Wow. I just what is me and I'm and I, I'm probably gonna watch over. I mean, I've yeah, <laughs> hit the phone. <laughs> I've got him in here. Because I was trying to get him the other oh, day, oh, day oh, man. You right? I, I think the overall purpose of the academy, though, is we we sell the tools and the gear that you're gonna need, and this academy is gonna provide you with the mindset. It's going to, it's going to rehearse anything from bushcraft to how to put a turn oh, Emerson. Emerson. and use our products in the process. Right. Sorry. Nah, I dig it. It was Clint Emerson. I see you guys. You, like you did something with like flashlight combatives with him. He's got yeah. He's got a whole run on, this, on, on Instagram for us right now. Yeah. And it's, and it's, it's great stuff. It's stuff that people. I, I think if you have the training and people like, people don't understand like how they use a flashlight yeah. defensively and it's kind right. of like, like I don't know if I talk to most of, like my you know my kids playing sports and the other dads like. Like bringing up defensive work with a yeah. flashlight, most dads would just be like, oh, "What? What are you talking yeah, about?" Yeah, <laughs> <What? laughs> I mean, like you bl- like you blind them with it, and you're like, "Ah, oh, well, you yeah, you got options." There's a couple other things you probably do with it first. Like, yeah. And, then, and I, I get a lot of dads that look at me like, "Okay, well, this guy's weird. I'm gonna stand over here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's other dads that are like, "That's awesome. Heck yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that's cool as hell. Like that's what I want to know." And like, and that's I, one of those great examples. Like he's yeah. he's training. He's, there's a huge audience of people that want to be prepared. They want to know right. how to do more. They want to. They don't want to be a victim. They don't want to have anything happen to their family. You know, as a dad, you want to protect your kids. You want to protect your wife or your significant other, like whoever it is. Like, so a lot of that kind of stuff with the academy and with, you know, getting Clint's, you know, his kind of his book out there is kind of like yeah. just people want the information. They want to know how to be self-sufficient. Like, heck yeah, that's not. And that's I think that's natural, and I love what you guys are doing with that. And as we all know. You can't take your gun to the fair, but you can get your flashlight in there. Yeah. You know like I, I in take our my fair, flashlight everywhere. Got stabbed. Yeah, they got stabbed like last month at the fair. Like That's a lot. It. We were like, whoa, 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 what? No, I got on <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, right? so. it. It's not like our local, you know, sheriff department doesn't have people there. They're like, cops. Yeah, I'm like, people how do people get away with? There's cops everywhere at that fair. Like, mm-hmm. they roll in force. Yeah, so that's a whole thing, you know. But yeah, I think the flashlight combative thing is is outstanding. Uh, Clint, trying to get you on the show sometimes to so hit me up. Uh, <laughs> um, we were talking earlier, but we, yeah, we lost touch. But anyways, but with the flashlights, you can take them anywhere, and if you can work with that and you can do that stuff, that's awesome. So as far as serving your demographic on a hot, another level mm-hmm. I'm totally digging that man uh, that's outstanding is there any any anything else you guys want to get out about 511 while we're here in this kind of space right now as far as future directions marketing oh, yeah, I, just, yeah 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 some I would things. like to know kind of if you guys have some goals like you know something you want to develop or 
maybe something currently in development or, <laughs> or sort of like where do you where do you see yourself design wise like with I know this year for example with the bags and packs you sure just kaboom like like next like level all of my luggage now is 511 and We've I got done to a revamp of that I got to borrow the uh, the cams yep so that was the big giant huge enormous case it's so big so where, where is it but the funny thing you about the 511 yeah you can <laughs> I'm gonna get it so Yo, you, like, you guys know what cam stands for yeah nah yeah. man carry all my shit oh yeah that's what's up I dig it carry all my stuff thank you yeah yeah of course of course no so, I uh, we'll start with this so every day I have this bag with me, right. and it carries all my duty gear, and it's all sectioned off inside. You guys can look at it online. And I'm copying and him on this. Right in here, <laughs> I keep pretty much like kind of everyday essentials. Yep. And then you want to show them the dividers? Sure. Yeah. Sorry. The bag is nasty. Can they see? You guys can see. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. I can like record here. So, pretty much inside here, I have a. I have a. I only use one divider right in the center here, and I keep all my. My plate carrier, my duty belt, all that stuff here. And then on this side, just kind of a bunch of, you know, bare essentials. And then in this big pouch here, I keep all of my CCW stuff. I'm Everything sure. for every gun I might have, CCW goes in here. And then on this other side here, in these two pouches, this is the canine pouch. So like all, ah. we, have, we have a bomb dog we work with. <laughs> all of her stuff stays in here, her e-collar and vest and whatnot. And then on this side here is, um, is all my like snivel gear? I think yeah, is what you call them. Like, snivel yeah. gear. Like, you know what I'm saying. Like got the beanie and like the gloves and all that kind of stuff. And then, and this big side pocket is my um, my uniforms. I always yeah. have like a whole extra Perfect. set of pants, socks, underwear. I have a little hoodie in here and um, two of our duty shirts that we wear at work. For when you forget. It. Does your bag have a bottom compartment that lifts up? Uh, no, so it does this not. So this yeah, is the some of my stuff bag, the Psalms bag. Yes, so the, so the, 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 the CAMS bag <laughs> is what I yeah, took with it. me on an international trip, and we took two of them. Yep. So my client bought one, and uh, and I and I bought one as well. Incredible. And you know, you got to carry your client stuff at the airport. It's, yeah. That's the way it is, boys. If you don't yeah, think you have to, you're in the wrong business. Wow. Well, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was able to train. Happy. I was able. I'm going through customs. No joke. And I'm walking up, and I, I link them together here, and I'm walking, carrying these two things. Train. Link them now, together? They now, chain up. Yeah, they, they chain up, so you can pull one. Two of them back to, like, the what? In, in unison. You can carry more than two. It so here really? gets to be a little bit of a balancing act once you have a it's train It's not that bad, dude. Two is really? fine. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love this. So Let's it goes it. like this, and then I just... Strap it together, heel. You got that in the shot. One, like this, heel. The Boom. tall guy again, right? The tall guy. Like this. And, and then they I'm roll able like to this? Just pull, and they roll. Oh like my this. gosh. If yeah, I would have had hey, that, for the viewers. when I was the luggage yeah. guy on the detail. Well, yeah, no. so it's like that. <laughs> Bro. That's nasty. I, I come, this uh, is the stuff I'm talking about right here. I come walking up through customs. Yeah. And the dude just looks at me, he's like, where are you coming from? I'm like, yeah. it's not all mine. And then my boss right next to me, I'm like, one's his, one's mine. Yeah. I'm just pulling. He's like, so the, the the customer dude goes through the thing and he's like, yo, where'd you get them bags? I was yeah, like, like, what's I was up? Like, 511.com. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, walk away, but thank the, you. Uh, and on that too, traveling, because I got like, you know, like I had a, I had a client, I got some nasty to me <laughs> luggage. Which I love. And I'm like, yeah, I got my to me bag, you know, whatever. And like, I get on a plane and I and it's cool and then I'm waiting for my bag if we're not flying private and then I'm like there's like 90 to me bags I, well no it's like <laughs> am I ever gonna see my expensive to me luggage again ever you know what I mean so like sure. you're sitting there like if anyone knows what they're looking at like why did I even bring this luggage <laughs> so I'm having this conversation with myself I'm like totally dude I'm not trying to lose this bag that's worth it you know, like more than everything in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I dig, I absolutely dig like having some hardcore stuff that I'm like not gonna get me flagged by like the dude who's not getting paid enough who's loading my bag. You know what I mean? Like, yes. totally. in some third world country, you know? This is to carry all my stuff. So, dude, what I, yeah. the way I worked this yeah, right. on that trip, that was a, how long was it? Like, I was uh, gone over two weeks. Yeah. And, um, in the Middle East, hanging out. The way I did this, just to keep it kind of simple, sure. um, was I used this under part, 
Which lifts for, up as a brief, yeah. For shoes and dirty clothes. Dirty clothes, clothes yeah. That's what it, yeah. But the dirty clothes and the shoes down here, as well as like uh, cables and chargers, all that kind of nonsense, radios. I put my comms down here. Awesome. Um, and then the top part was for everything else. Yep. And uh, it was it was just it's so big <laughs> but it's a you start buying stuff my client loved it that was he thing. was like this yeah. is awesome like <laughs> right because you got to check luggage anyway it's not like you're not checking luggage you yeah. know going on a trip that long yeah and um we checked this had no size issues whatsoever awesome. had no weight issues um the it's bag cool. is so stinking light say, it's pretty light it's lighter than my Tumi roller which is what wow. i replaced it with awesome. it's bigger than my Tumi roller um, but like no oversized issues. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, Heck yeah. You know, so. and you can beat it up and you're not like, ah, eh, ah, looking at your bag. Yeah, <laughs> you know, no, the these, yeah, they're, they're a bit heavier than we'd even like them to be, to be completely honest, but yeah. it's all for that, that purpose that Heck this yeah. is, this is an overbuilt suitcase that you can essentially take on your own plane yeah. or take on the plane in, in this case scenario. Heck yeah. I like this term overbuilt. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, I would. Uh, it, I would say that that uh, brand attributes, durability, comfort, yeah. function, and then packing all of that into the fourth one, which is value. Yeah. In my words, that equals our style. And <laughs> our style. Yeah. I dig it, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, this bad boy, man. Eric kicked this to me. When I was going somewhere uh, a few months ago. Sure. And I loved it. Wow. Good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, you know, the just like. What's the name of it? This is the LV10 Low Vis, uh, basically 10 hour pack. In a, low in, Vis 10. We work in hour increments for the okay. nomenclature of the bags. Oh, um, really? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not liter itch. Uh, so, so 10 hours, just to noting that this is essentially smaller than the 18 hour backpack. Okay. It's a sling. Um, it is ambidextrous in use, but it's not ambidextrous in the sense that I'm sure you've noticed it only goes over your right shoulder. Right. But the whole idea of spinning it around front, also, I, have you found this cam to be useful? Like ultra easy yeah. to adjust. So basically, excuse me for a second. Yours yeah, is, man, do work. Yours is sticky. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So once I have it in front, I yeah. can work with whichever hand I want. Double yeah. zips on each side. Just want to point that out because it is an ambidextrous bag. But the idea here was that we basically started um, with a, a previous style called the UCR, the okay. Urban Casualty Response, and that was that's my jam. That was a yeah, that's my jam. that was a med sling, and it's on the wall over there if you want to grab it. And the idea there was that we were just learning from camera bags and guys who operate while um, on body out of a out of a uh, camera bag, switching lenses, switching filters, okay. and just the idea that. Those kind of, you know, minute motor skills, uh -huh. they go out the window when there's an actual yeah, urban casualty like incident. Cat. Everyone has gross motor skills. So we adjusted these camera bags to sort of fit all of these med items in an array of ways. Yeah. The popularity of this silhouette, this that bag here, jam. it was right basically now, just years. transferred over to operating uh, in a low vis environment. So awesome. the idea here is that you have a plain face looking bag. Yep. And then and it's the not inside, all Molly Wally da. It's not all not like at all. The Molly's here on the inside, exactly. so you can populate how you would. You have a small iPad slash um, tablet, tablet compartment. I, I think the 13-inch apples fit in there. Okay. If you're if you're looking at laptops, Wait, uh, <laughs> like, you can shove What's that, that in there. Again? <laughs> and then the back compartment, which I love that you've got it all set up. Yeah, we have basically our little overlapping belt system so you can sort of take out your appendix or any kind of holster that would run through a belt. That's what that's you can either for. run it through or secure it, it down. Or it's just okay, a little belt. Okay. So th yeah. this idea was born out of that one and we've really? seen a lot of success um, in that low vis territory. I mean right. this year at SHOT Show seeing the CZ Scorpion and the Rattler and yes. the, its ability to fit inside of yeah, here. Yeah, our friend uh, Pannone, he has a yeah. little CZ you know, little Scorpion sweetness. and he was just like, he was at SHOT Show and he's like, Eric, what's this called? I need this now. And he's like online trying to yeah, get he's it. Like, Make this happen. Yeah. Hear it. Yeah, um, so this, I know you guys have, are you still partnered with North American? I believe so. Rescue? Um, so I sweet. came in here Zippy one time, things. coming in the, coming in the store, the and they had one of these bags <laughs> right here all rigged out Thanks. with, yeah, I think it was like pretty much four of everything. It was like four tourniquets. Presser dressings. I'm not sure dogs. the exact quantities, but yeah, but yeah. it's packed out um, to the brim. And this thing was perfect. So they have these kind of buckles right here, 
and if I want to, I can just pull it down and it kind of stops it on that buckle, and then fold it open, and then right in there, I had my whole med set up. So in our limo, Vic, yep. that we use at work, we have this bag with that whole med kit Everything. shoved in, and I bought like, Perfect. I was just like, I want this, and they're like, okay, and you know, they sold me the med kit and the bag with it, and it's been our go-to we yeah. just it's lived in that car that whenever we travel we take that with us as our as our bag but um i found a second use for this where i was able to use it as a camera bag yeah and, and that's where it was born i keep uh <laughs> I, I basically used the dividers here and kept the uh, house or body with a lens and then two lenses right here pretty much had everything i needed for it um, and that's kind of for camera gear that's kind of what I've really got away with this one, because like every once in a while I try to be like a little more low pro, even though I'm kind of like not the most lowest proest looking dude, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but when I throw this on, there's all kinds of camera, things you can do, yeah. Yeah, and I have a camera around my neck, and I'm like working out of this bag, and I'm like taking photos and stuff. I get a lot less friction. Uh, sure. For being the security dude. Yep. So that's kind of really what it pass the like tripod there. through there. It's gonna get heavy. There's a water bottle holder. Yeah. It both of these holder? bags work off that, that camera that and fishing bag mentality. Oh, so yeah. this guy here, he just unsnaps Opens up a little bit, and you can basically throw the bottle in there, and it sits on your back vertical, so it'll yeah, never yeah. come out, and you can cinch it down too. That's awesome. Yeah. So again, I think we found just in talking about bags here, yeah. exactly why we have a store. You right. can't find these features if you're just looking at pictures on the internet. <laughs> right, and no one ever reads all the I mean, I don't read it. I get some trash and I'm We're like, all putting it on and I'm like, yo, Instagram has made sure that we spend three seconds right. or less. The only thing I will say that I, I did, yeah. the only friction I ran into with this was this strap will pop off. So like, Sometimes if I'm like moving around, I got like kids and stuff around me or yep. something, and I really want to like cinch this thing down, and it looks like you made it so it would release. Uh, this guy pops off yes. the corner pocket. Yeah. Okay. So cool. Just that was the only thing that I noticed. Like there was a point where I was like moving around, and I was like, All right, let me tighten this up, and I was like, bump, and I like popped out of it. Yep. And I was like, okay. So then I had to pack it back up at night. This might be a wear test from before we commercialize it because I'm <laughs> noticing that there's a different pass through on yours okay. right here. Let's check it out though before we, let's yeah, check it out cool. on the, yeah, production. That's model. what's up, man. So that was my only thing with that. But other than that, that's my new sling bag, bro. That's Good to like, hear. Great I'm to getting hear. down. Luke's still running around here, grabbing stuff. Uh, yeah, so. We're going into the bring it all in. Yeah, yeah. Just because, I, just because to me it's been a really big deal and I think for a lot of people and I, I believe these have been quite successful for you because almost everybody I know has a pair. Replace all mine. Yeah. Replace all my previous pants. Um, I only yeah, have one kind of pants. the brakes off of any other jeans. Even the $200 pair of jeans yeah. I used to buy. Um, Try them. Kind of where this come from? What started this? What made you guys want to do it? And then how did you, you know, make them different than... There were a lot of... There are a couple, you know... We'll call them Gucci tactical companies out there that had jeans. I have a pair of one of those companies and I liked them, mm -hmm. but I don't like them as much as I like these for sure. And they're about triple the price. Um, and uh, you know, so things for me, biggies is this uh, this rear pocket here is, I worked a detail recently where I put an AR, mm -hmm. mag, that was my AR mag pouch. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, <laughs> it's just like, oh, Hmm. And I practiced with it. Literally. You were there at the good, range yeah. a couple times. Thank you. Well, it's pretty fast. Like, pretty good with this. Like, you know? It really wasn't made for anything else. I mean, <laughs> I people have found apologetic. all kinds it's of... It's perfect for a cell phone. Yeah. But, perfect for a cell well, phone. And we've talked about our EDC. Yeah, exactly. we've, we've done pocket dumps, and I'll, I'll store a, um, a full-size with a mag extender yeah. magazine mm -hmm. back there when I'm just everyday carry walking around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, flashlight that's one of my favorite, favorite things to put back there too is I'll throw mm -hmm. a flashlight there also but kind of what was the idea behind these and then the implementation ultimately uh, I mean to be honest I mean we kind of I, the design team use the old kiss principle like keep it simple stupid like <laughs> I mean that's really I mean that's the, that's the beauty of it like the idea is that we're a pant brand and you know we got uh, if, and if you went to any yeah you went we, we, they tried jeans in the past it didn't yeah. go yeah. as well be. yeah and I, I think the idea is that that first attempt was, you know, I wouldn't say fart in church, but it did not go very, it was like dad, mom, gene kind of style. Yeah. And then when this came out, it was more like, hey, we're, you know, we, we just took the DNA, it literally was like splicing the DNA from what we we're currently doing with the strike. 
like I guess what's the bare functionality that our guy's gonna need to be low vis, comfortable all day, and how do we and really like how to replace the jeans like the like I, I, I was never the Gucci jean like you guys. You guys are be in the market, like a tax bracket. I should probably figure out how to do it. Um, but like, we got a podcast on that, how to get started in executive Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, just, right. and just, check so, it out. just send in fifteen hundred yeah. bucks. Well, yeah, right. yeah. Right. Um, but I think really what came out is like, how do you make a, a just? It's just a really f- I, it, that is a quintessential part of what we did with Strike and Apex and all these yeah. bands is like, how do you add the functionality? How do you add the comfort and have that all day wear? And, and at the end of the day, too, and like I Scott brought up earlier, it's like, how do you bring it in so it's a reasonable price for our guys? Like, yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, you, know, you guys, I mean, yeah. I saw you guys come in the Bentley. Was it Bentley or whatever? No, you guys it was not. It was actually, it was actually <laughs> Don't believe him. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it was the rules. It's, it's a range rover. Rover. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> with the average, but for us, our average guy, like, you know, average law enforcement, like, it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's not paying. Yeah, you're not. It's not, it's, you're not making millions. So, like, how do you go to a guy's closet and, like, I mean, I don't know you guys, but like jeans is is very personal. It's a very personal thing for guys. Like it sounds like I don't have a lot of personal items or clothing, but like jeans is one that you kind of when you find your favorite. Stand behind it, yeah. You you want it to not change. Yeah, you can't have it change. I don't want it to go anywhere. That's why like so many iconic brands have been out with denim for so many years, decades. Yeah. So I think the idea behind that was just like how do you how do you give what guys expect from us. Um, at the reasonable price, and I think that's the, the design team and development did an exquisite job. They did job. an awesome job. Yeah. Like when this launched at Shot Show, it was one of those funny things. Like this, everyone was really itching for these to get a pair of jeans, and then they we launched at Shot, and we have the, our store in Las Vegas. So it's one of those. It, it was, you knew we had a good like one of the funny things we had, like sometimes people argue in that house like. If you are almost sold out of your product when it first comes in because employees buy it all up, then you know you you know you got sold. I went to Tom. I was at the party at the five eleven store, and I was like, I was like, yeah, move, Tim. (laughs) Hey, Doc, you you got any of them jeans? And he just looked at me, he's like, nope. (laughs) And he just smiled. I was like, damn it. (laughs) That's that's because we all knew the jeans were there. So literally, I don't know for the guys I traveled with that time, we got there. Didn't go to Shot Show first. We were right to the store. Oh wow! Bought our jeans. I was with you. Right, you bought the <laughs> jeans. Drove out there. Together. We drove out, got jeans first, and then went to Shot Show. And then we everyone the show like, hey, do you guys get your jeans yet? And everyone's like, oh, yeah. I got, oh, I'm gonna get lunch. <laughs> I gotta yeah. Yeah, 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 right. I gotta and go back. Like, I gotta go. I got a thing to do. In the yeah. Room. So right. half the booth emptied out of employees and friends of the brand stuff. Yeah. Everyone went. And then when we had the night of our you know, operators dinner that we have there. When you got there, everyone's like, what happened to all the 36, 32s? And then everyone at 5 was like, <laughs> no idea, man. I don't know what happened to them. Like, <laughs> as your bag is full, like, like three pairs. Jammed in the trunk. Yeah. Heck yeah. Because we've all been wearing and fit testing, but we're like, this finally production is done. And we're like, oh, man, it's the time. Because like, yeah. I think the thing is, like, like you're jo- kind of joking about the tactical tuxedo or the, yeah. co- the, opera- the, the, you know, the contractor's tuxedo, kind of the joke there. But... You know, sometimes you don't want to be wearing strike pants. You don't want to be overtly tactical. And right. especially, like, you just want to be... You want something that's a dude. You just want to be a yeah, normal dude, and yeah. like, you don't want to have pocket a, six and seven. Yeah, yeah. that but pocket six and seven, I dig it. But pocket six and seven, though, like, like, yeah, it was designed for a mag, for AR mag, but then at the end of the day, like, the function, functionality, functionality, yeah, yeah functionality it. always. Guys like gear, dude, and honestly, yeah. these are jeans, and it's gear, and right. guys like when you travel. I mean, we travel all through Asia and around the world, yeah. like. You, we're always trying to figure out how to streamline the kit. Yeah. And, and like, granted, like, we're, and it's me, I'm just going to factories. Like, I'm not doing anything. I'm not I'm yeah. doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. High speed or whatever. Right. So we think we're James Bond in the airport, and then we get to the factory and we realize. Time to work. No, <laughs> we're so <laughs> soccer balls. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, so man. I will say, like, the uh, now, which, it, like, I still, I love my Lululemons, but now when I don't wear, like, a 5'11 pant, I literally am like, Oh, I dropped it. I've cracked so many cell phones. Like, I'm pissed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I literally try to the drop back my... back pocket, so if you can't... If that I, I six and seven a, pocket is yeah. so clutch. You, you know? dropped a lot of cell phones. Because you right. just also you just, you just have no, no love, man. Yeah. I had a favorite <laughs> pair of jeans yeah. from a, you know, a company, an outdoor company, and, and every time I would just also do this, and it didn't pop in and just drop it on the ground, and my kids would just laugh at me like, Dad's... Like, yeah, like, Dad's retarded, yeah. Dad's <laughs> denial at this, at, you know, in his 40s, but... Heck yeah, and the one thing, what I guess my personal, what I like about the jeans is, because I don't even wear jeans, but these are the only jeans I'll wear, uh, just because of the things I notice is it can fit my thighs into them, which yeah. is like, 
Awesome. Yep. Thank you for that. Yep. No problem. <laughs> uh, uh, they have stretch to them. Right. So I can like get in and out of the the vehicles and all the stuff that we got to do without being like all like ah, having to jump up and do all kinds of weird yeah. stuff well, because my like, like, stretch cannot me. be underestimated. Right, exactly. Man. You seem yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you see, like the stretch pants really like, kicked it off for us. And, yeah, and, and then the, the pocket game, dude. The pocket and but the strike pant like that's one that for us really. Chain, like it just you know we're talking about needle movers or whatever yeah. you know NBA term you want to talk about something mm-hmm. like really changed the game yeah. um, but those really did change the game for us because <laughs> it just came down to comfort it came functionality and comfort and, and the thing is like for guys like when you look out for all of that like you, it's hard not to you can't put on I, I you have to find somebody to put on strike pants like you know these are really actually great pants right They're super comfortable like you could be hiking in the woods or you could be going to work like. And you don't look like a weirdo. You're good, and, and it's comfortable, totally and cool. they're flexible, and they do what you need them to do. And right. and that, I mean, when I saw some of the preliminary meetings when I was here, just started and, and here about the strike pant, and like the battles to get that pant to market was it was ferocious. Like, really? People were like, because at the time I think the pricing was going to be like close to seventy bucks, and we, um, we were kind of the fifty, the forty-five, fifty-dollar pant. Okay. And stretch, and everyone's like, do we really need What's this? What's the big deal? What's yeah. The big deal. Nobody yeah. wants this, and. At the time, the guy who really fought hard for it, and he kept pushing and pushing, and then everyone thought he was crazy. Of course, he's crazy. And then, (laughs) as like it hit, and then it was like it was like a typhoon. It just hit, and then it was like the market saw the value. Well, everyone's just like, oh my god, I don't. It's they fit better. I'm more comfortable. You guys made it in the color. I can wear it to work. And also, we just had departments just like, yep, I'm good. I'm switching out. Like extra thirty bucks, my pleasure. Take it. Like. I, I'm, I'm going to be more comfortable. The pants are going to last longer. I look better. I'm look more professional. It, it was just a, a huge win for us. Heck yeah! Awesome, awesome, awesome. The uh, to these. yeah, which brings me to my next. Um, so what are these guys here? This is the new the ABR, ABR Pro. Pro. Right. The so one we can get is it? it? Yeah, dude. So I like. I love these things, man. Like, uh, sorry. So for me, you know, like I'm phobic of having that kind of like frumpy cargo pant look. Absolutely. Because I'm only, let's say, like I'm only like five ten, five eleven with my church shoes on, right? right. So in my world, <laughs> right, boom. So in my world, I'm all running around with all these other EP dudes who are all like search for everything, right? <laughs> and so <laughs> you know, which works out because sometimes I can be more chilly, whatever. So I, I'm like not gonna wear something that makes me look any shorter or any wider. Absolutely. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I love that you guys like tapered these. Not that I'm a skinny jean. Don't get ideas. They're not skinny jeans. Not, not skinny you know. Jeans. Not that I'm a skinny jean guy, but yeah. like having these tapered now, I can put them on with like some civilian mm-hmm. shoes, and I just look like I'm wearing some cool pants. You know yep. what I mean? And then you guys went through this little stretchy chapter in yep. here yep. this little stretchy chapter in here is awesome man like because it just it adds to the comfort and the mobility um and then this is like my favorite new wallet pocket ah. slash cell phone pocket mm-hmm. and uh so that's that's what i love about these guys right here so this is like my other favorite 511 pant right now dude so th- this pant is really hitting home on that value. There's all the durability you need. Right. There's there's function, like you said. This is this is clearly your favorite fabric. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the same it's fabric that you're seeing over there. Okay, that's what's up. But man. basically, what you're seeing here is all those features that we just talked about, especially that drop well. Yeah, yeah. That's my cell phone and wallet pocket and, right there. And that's all coming in at a competitive price. And that's that's this pant describes everything that we're trying to do at this company. Awesome. If I was gonna make one suggestion, like one little, I love it, <laughs> and, it and another one, right? We'll get there. What about? Cause you know, there's some companies that put this kind of stretchy material in the seams, like sure, in, as a gusset. Yeah, stretch, yeah, yeah. Like that's something I'd be curious to see how you guys. So this has a little be. bit of flex involved in it already. So okay. for durability purposes, we're oh. just going to leave that gusset as so because okay. you're going to get the stretch out of this. Are these yeah. the ones we pulled the Jeep with? No. Or pulled the These are with? not. No. Oh, okay. No. I think that was the Apex, huh? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was my only thing that I was like, I wonder what it would be like. So you guys already kind of have that here. We have it in different areas, but I think it, when it comes down for us, it comes down to kind of the price. Uh, like, I think it's a great. It's a. And we had some pants that actually had that stretch gusset the whole way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, th- you did. Those are real comfortable. They're like stone cutters or. Yeah, yeah. I think the, I don't. Uh, know stone cutters were. Yep. So we had those, and cool. and the thing for us is like, 
you're getting all these features and all these updates because this yeah. is derived from like one of our original this is like the original pan like the tack light pro pan right so we updated all the features here but the thing for us is when we we come back to our customer and be like hey guys like you know the difference between there's there's a it's kind of like you know this this is probably like mid 2000s this is 2019 for this new pant yeah and the difference is this is 54 dollars and this is 59 dollars okay wow that's amazing so we're giving you all the functionality but we're trying to give it and that's one of the things like yeah when our team goes through it like from development and design and like we it's a full 360 kind of like view of the product like you know we, how's we, it going to affect everything yeah how, you, how is everything going to work in here and then at the end of the day too like all right so what price are we going to make sure that our guy can get to that so and that's yeah. the big thing for us is that kind of value proposition that we talk about is like yeah i mean there's there's certain tactical companies like you said the gucci tactical companies that you know this they could probably make this out of stretch out of some crazy material from shoulder and it would be a 400 yeah. dollar pant and that's awesome if you are special forces and the u.s government. and you're not buying it and you're not buying it. You know, the yeah. dod tax, taxpayers are from yeah, yeah the dod corporate shit. card comes yeah. out or space like force. if you know yeah, or your executive protection like you guys which is awesome but so that that story is great but then at the end of the day it's like you know it's is it kind of, relevant like, is, is it, it relevant it? to your guy it's yeah. one of those funny things like i mean i always kind of think it's interesting like glock and all that world is like you know, Glock, especially, I, I always, I, I find the story of it always very intriguing, just because of how it came up and how the guy, you know, how Gaston started it, was really just kind of laughed at in Austria. Like, you're, you, know, you make knives, and you should probably get yeah, really. Like, like you should. He's got a really cool book that kind of talks about what he was doing to get there. But you know, at the end of the day, like he made a highly functional piece of you know protection gear that really and truly like it's price sensitive. Like it's, it was all about price for him, but like uh, I don't know if you got like it, that's it's still a hallmark within law enforcement, military. Like I don't know if Sig's got the world now for the army, but like yeah, but there's what the guys have and what the guys want, and I can tell you that everybody kind of wants a Glock 19. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> like, but you know, like, you know, it's one of those crazy things. Like it functionality were not one out, and it, it's kind of one of the things. Like it's affordable. It changed the whole. It, it changed like it changed the whole game. Absolutely. In that world. And that's, yeah. and that's kind of when we look at some of these pants, it's like, how do you, like, the Strike is a great example, like, how the, how the Avar Pro Pants doing for us right now, it's changing the game for us, is that, you know, we got you at 70 bucks, and now at 55 bucks, also we come in, and also guys that are like, oh, you guys are listening, like, this is, I can wear this on a daily basis, yeah. it's the most Yeah, I have these in a khaki. Um, I rock them in that OD green right That there. I wear a lot, like, yeah. um, mm-hmm. If I'm, wearing, if I'm wearing with like a sport coat or something like that, and they, really? they looked good. That and what are those pants right there called? These are the Edge Chinos. Those are the Edge Chinos. Those are yeah, the I, have, chinos. I have a pair of those too that I'll I'll rock and uh, you know with some of those new shoes. Yeah. Since you're the shoe guy, I'm just gonna. Do I know sure. this too, man. I haven't tried these out, but this pocket. Those are brand bro. new. The Capital Pin. So this is a bit more angled, faster version of some of the improvements from. Maybe something like this is the DNA of the Apex Cargo. Right. This is a different fabric than this before. Fabric's a little, a little bit, bit lighter weight and with more yeah, stretch. Yeah, soft and stuff. You still have that waistband, the expanding stretch waistband Ooh. that you like. Uh oh. Uh oh. And then the famous. We talking business six right now. Six and seven pocket. Gotta have that six and seven pocket. I might. And are these tapered? Are these? They're, okay. There's a. Can't tell. So like with those pants, oh. I'll wear them with these new shoes. Now those shoes. When these hit. This is real. Here, I was like. <laughs> like hit about like I had yeah, to have these. Um, I don't know what they're called, but basically it's a very nice dress like shoe. shoe. They polish up great. Yeah, I've, I've I've already polished them and it had it done in the airport once. But this uh, sole, just yeah. compared to the normal dress shoe. Yeah, that's yeah. You can yeah. run in them. You can do everything you need yeah. to do them. I remember yeah. when I got them. I came in the office. I was like, look what I got, Pippin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, dog. No, those are five eleven. And, and I showed him the little five eleven, the little pro emblem right there. Yeah, the little yeah. emblem. But these, um, I have both these colors now. Yeah, uh, the mission I, ready chakas. I wear them a lot. What are yeah. they called? The mission ready chaka series. Yeah. These, so uh, yeah, and then that's a, the whole thing was kind of your. You guys were the kind of. The, the catalyst kind of executive protection secret service I was about to say that that's a perfect ep shoe so first with the idea is i mean it comes down to like what you know i think we kind of talk about a lot and we talk about a lot internally it's like it co- you know for at least for footwear we always talk about like solving for x like what are you solving for like you know you could make whatever kind of frivolous crap i mean you go forever 21 or go to the mall or 
go yeah. to Skechers and find something that's you know. But how do you make it more functional for our guy? And that was the big for that was like we partnered with Vibram, put a Vibram bottom on it. Right. The midsole is actually we're the only ones in the world that use that midsole. It's called D3O light, so it's actually a nano material, so it act it reacts to force and weight. Really? So it actually it gives you kind of the same properties you see from like an EVA, but it actually works what we found way better for extended time on your feet. Okay. Um, we Heck partnered yeah. with Ortholite. And overall, the shoes, the idea is like you need it to be. We had, well, we had a funny story once. We had a guy who was talking about he was uh, C, uh, FBI Secret Service, had to go active at a mall. There was a robbery or something to happen with the, the bank, chasing a perp, and he slipped out of that concrete because he had a pair of like old school Cole Haan shoes on. So he slipped oh. out. He didn't have the traction. Knocked himself out cold. No! Well, they so, saw the perpetrator run right by their lunch table. Even. Right. So it was like they <laughs> had a silent alarm go, and they're like, oh, okay, I guess we got to do something. To so work. my yeah. story. I used to have a shoe. I have a shoe guy, a shoe and boot guy. I would get a, a lot pair of dress shoes yeah. that I liked a lot, yeah. and I would go have him resole them, resole them with a whole nother sole. That's what a lot and of I've had. Do, yeah. You know the ones I have, the, the black ones. The, this boot that I've had forever mm -hmm. looks great. I, I think it's a Cole Haan boot or something like that, and I, I just, I used to have to go pay to yeah. resole them. Dude, that would be like. 80 to 100 bucks right and you're already you doing know. it to a 200 dollars shoe yeah right? so, <laughs> so, uh, absolutely but it's what i had to have because at the time i was in a suit every day right you know yeah. and that works you gotta have so yeah. our, our process is just uncovering those stories we're yeah. not yeah. so much inventing these things as we are listening to you yeah. yeah um so we had kind of a wet year this year and um i got really into long range shooting and i got a pair of these boots yeah, and um boot. man I beat the living tar out of them, but uh, Byron's favorite thing about these boots is this little boot knife oh, pocket right here. <laughs> this little really stash pocket right here. You, you finally like, got a boot knife pocket. Like, yeah. yeah. And, and you um, always hear boot knives, but ain't nobody ever keeping a knife in their boot. I also no. really like the look of these because they do not look like a military boot. It looks like a work boot. Yeah. yeah. And um, you know, like a like a pair of Tims that's ten times more comfortable. But Something that, like that. I like the little the black purpose. hit. I, mm -hmm. I, just, I like these boots a lot. You think? Well, I mean, for us, it's just like we we're trying to figure out guys that wanted a resolvable boot and kind of that European style from it. And the big thing for us is just how do we put more technology than what you get from other brands? Like, yeah. this, this boot, one of the funny thing about this boot right now for us in the line is probably the most, from the look of it, you were, it's hard to say, but it's heritage. Well, it's the heritage, but it's the most technological Advanced? boot that we have in the line. Really? And yeah. you wouldn't tell by looking at it. It looks so like just smooth and chill. So like, if you I mean, flip over the bottom, like the bottom is mega grip from it's the this at the time was the newest formula from Vibram was actually the material came from fly fishing shoes. So they needed material that, that worked in wet and under dry, rocks and underwater and moss. Wow. So they drive mega grip. Now there's new versions of mega grip which we'll be looking at in the future for us. But so that was at the time cutting edge from Vibram. That midsole is D three O light, so it's a nano material itself. The up, uh, it's got Kevlar in the heel, the leather that uses, and it actually has a bunch of other properties that, you know, they're chemical resistant and-, and Yeah, like that's what they were telling me. They were started reading off the things, I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, sounds badass though. But I, have, I was like, <laughs> Can how I much? It? I want these, and I, I bought them, and we've had a wet year. I just yeah. wore these. Yeah, they're great. How do they my, breathe and stuff? How's your foot? They're inside fantastic. this deal. Yeah, it, for us, we use an EVET lining, so it's a blood okay. more passion resistant membrane. It's like a- Okay. Kind of like we used to- A like, layer. It's a, it's a full-on layer inside of it. it helps make the shoe more breathable, water-resistant, okay. mm -hmm. blood more passion, so it keeps away anything blood guts and they're nasty. Yeah. There's a, we, because the black version of this, we have a lot of horror stories from guys at LA Sheriff up at different places, and what they get on their shoes on a daily basis is pretty... Uh, yeah, gorgeous. one of our friends, yeah. SCB guy, he, he has a pair of these in black. He, right. He's like, and he was like, he's OG, he's like, no man, I like my Danner. There's like or like Red Wings or yeah, something like that, you know. And then he got something. these. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, the footbed, yeah. the footbed itself. If you took the footbed out, it's a D three O footbed, so the same similar material. Like, it's it's like walking on a cloud all day. Yeah. yeah, really. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. I'd like to try these out, man. So oh, these are a new like outdoorsy. Well, I I use them. You know our crazy. ranch. It's yeah. and I got really into. Oh wow, wow, that's nice. You can I, wear them through summer. I yeah, got really into it. Really really it's really really it's above 85. And sometimes, like, when I'm well. casual, I just really don't lace them up. I leave them unlaced and just kind of exactly. rock them like that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, uh, you know, the ranch, it, it, this year it was super muddy. I got sure. really into long range shooting, so I'm always hiking up, yep. you know, seven, 800 yards up a mountain and, uh, you know, to set up targets, steal targets, mm -hmm. and things like that. We did a lot of work at the range this year, and these things just last. And what's cool is, at least with this color, the more they got 
beat up kind of the better, better than they, than they looked, looked. But like they never got to where they looked trashed. Like they weren't the 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 outsole is so durable. You didn't get that scratched up look. Mm -hmm. It just kind of started all together right. fading a little bit. You yeah, know? I mean, it's just like a great pair of broken in boots, you know? Like yeah. They just, just start getting better with age. What well, ones are those called? The Apex. Apex um, boot. And then this is something I saw the other yeah, day. I'm gonna like, try. I'm, I'm oh, this is basically like a really cool, it looks like a Vans. Sure. Um, but probably 10 times more comfortable and probably has a whole bunch of other a lot of hidden features. Yeah, really? awesome. like what are we looking at in here, man? Well, for us, we, uh, but I saw cool. those at first. I was like, I um, I'm gonna need these. <laughs> um, the idea is like we have guys that wanted some more low vis. I mean, mm -hmm. I think it's always ask for guys that want some low vis, but they want something if something has to go active. So, uh, part with Vibram. It's a so, it's a on so it's a, a Vibram sole on the bottom. So it's slip and oil resistant. Okay. Uh, the upper is, you know, it takes on that classic skate styling to it. Uh, we got the toe, which is climbing grade rubber for protection on the toe. Oh yeah, that's not like. But it's not soft. Yeah. The idea is that it's going to be protection. And then the big thing about this shoe, too, inside, so it is uh, ASTM certified for puncture resistance. So, really? Um, on the bottom. On the bottom. So, so, so puncture resistance? Things. So, yeah. we'll jump into things, but so, so if you, cool. so inside, so if you're going to do like a traditional like ASTM certification, so it's about 290 pounds of force okay. uh, to protect you from, so stepping jumping on, on stuff, yeah, stepping on stuff more. So, like stepping on nails, broken glass is not going to be coming up through the bottom. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the thing for us is like that shoe launch for us and I, it's been on fire for us right now. It's, and the thing is like, for our guys that are like, hey, I just want something that looks more low pro. I mean, we've had guys, we've had departments coming in, we've got guys from LA that come down and they're interested in using this for their, some of their, you know, their task force. Yeah. Like, they're like, hey, but I don't need this logo. We're like, all right, just, sure off. just cut it off. And they're like, oh, okay, yeah, we're all, gonna, we're all gonna get a pair then. Like, <laughs> they're like, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's been a great shoe for us and it's kind of that blend of, you know, tactical and practical is like, you don't want, like you guys talk about, like you guys want to be able to be low pro and know, yeah. Yeah. but you also need that functionality that. Absolutely. No, that's like, for me, that would be just the awesome travel shoe. Just yeah. take that and forget it about. looks great. Yeah, <laughs> work out in them. They, seem, yeah. they look like something I could work out in or I'd want to work out in. Yeah. Um, I shot three gun nationals this year and I came in here and I asked um, Eric, I was like, I need a boot for this. And the terrain there was like extremely, lots of loose rocks. Yeah. Sure. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna take my cleats with me, but I'm not sure if they're gonna work or not. Mm -hmm. And um, he he turned me on to this boot. Yeah. And I don't know anything about it other than I had a lot of friends with twisted ankles at that match. Sure. Um, cleats just absolutely didn't work. I ended up ditching my cleats about halfway through the first day. I was like, this isn't gonna work. And plus you're on your feet all day, mm -hmm. three, four days out at the range. and. Uh, in Henderson? These were, yeah, in Henderson, or, yeah, we're pro gun, pro gun yeah, club yeah, out yeah. there, you know, and uh, these things were f amazing for me. All day comfortable, breathes really well. I don't even know what they're called, but... Yeah, Expert 3.0. Expert 3.0. Yeah, but. Was a, we have a family that this kind of derived from, and for this one to come out was the idea, of, like, how do we make it, you know, the faster, lighter, stronger mantra, kind of, we, we've been going for a while with the, the, a, the Expert, it's been a great series for us, and, and when we got to this, it was like, how do we update it? make it more comfortable, make it more functional. I mean, when we started, we started with the black, obviously we started with the black version. Yeah. Um, and then we started moving to different colors because it's just been, it's been, the fan base has been great. And the idea is that just to make a, a really great functional six inch boot. There are guys that they, they can do, like you say, you can do anything in it, you know? Like yeah. we've had guys, this is a great boot for us. When guys came in, they bought the black boot and we've, we've had other colors like slowly come out for this. Like they come, they buy the black boot for work and all of a sudden, you know, a week later they come back and they buy the dark parody one. Like, well, I kind of went for the weekends. Yeah, and now we have a brown one that we kind of did. We have some friends overseas and the, the MOD that like that color over there. And uh, so this I is, love this color. It's great. And we, have, great. we have another uh, another awesome brown. I think cognac is be coming out before you know. Cognac. Uh, but for us, it's kind of <laughs> once again that multifunctional shoe that can have you can wear in all these different situations. Heck so yeah. when I when I come here. These are the things, especially about coming into the store, that the candy. always catch me the my candy. eye. <laughs> that, you know, it's not the stuff you always see on the the candy on the gram or you know. Right. The cool you don't stuff. come in thinking you're gonna get, but like, like I talked about, I, I do a lot of competitive shooting and did some PRS this year. This thing, the TKO Ratchet Kit, this is now basically living in all my bags. Sure, and it has <clears throat> all little tools to it, and it's like the thing's cheap. It's like. 20 or 30 bucks, something yeah. like that. And I'm like, this is awesome. 
But it's yeah. these things that you guys have. This uh, five-way gate. This is a five eleven gateway product. Really? Anybody can use this. From oh. my mom to you. Gateway product. <laughs> this is yes. gateway we got product. You. This goes we in the glove box. Just give this to them. And, and hopefully you think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That window. <laughs> so I gave this away as our yeah. our gift this year to my team. Um, along with a couple other things, but mm -hmm. I've, I grabbed everything that I've given away to the team before. So I had all my guys in axe. I got axes like right yeah, when they came out, I was like, I'll take 15 of these. And they're like, wait, what? I only have 12. I'm like, order more. Yeah. <laughs> and I ended up getting them uh, inscribed and everything, you know, for the guys. But uh, this operator axe, I mean, just seeing Kyle, you know, throwing this thing, I'm like, that's pretty awesome. Well, that's awesome. It's, yeah, it's know, Kyle. That's Kyle. <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's Kyle Lamb throwing an axe. What's yeah. up? And his explanation of the axe was like brilliant. It's like, oh no, it's not just an axe, it's a tool, you know? Yeah. And um, I love that. But uh, these pins, I don't know, what what is a Kubaton? Do you know? It's a martial arts tool for... <laughs> That's as far as I got. This is a <laughs> compliance tool, is what I would call it. A compliance <laughs> tool. I don't compliance is more it's just a pen, pen. Right? It's more like a, I don't know, this last ditch effort kind of tool. Like yeah. Our team, uh, the accessory team that work on this, Matt and and Jane do an awesome job. Re they do so much research and trying to figure out ways to make something. Th this is more, this is a lot more cue than like a lot of the stuff, like shoes is like we try to hide functions, but there's there's no phone, like we're not gonna put a cell phone on the bottom or anything like yeah. that. Like, <laughs> Maxwell Smart, but like this stuff is as close to cue as you can get and it's, yeah. it, they do an amazing job because the functionality, like, I mean this pen, like your tactical pen, you're like yeah, it's dual grip, you could write with it, but in a last just effort, like if you, if push comes to shove, you click the pen back, like this is, Gonna go through something, yeah. yeah. Somebody, um, the the rescue tool is this thing is just phenomenal. Like, the, it's such a good rescue tool. It's amazing, it's and fantastic. they did a great job. And once again, they did a great job with the design, the, all the elements of it, and the functionality of it is just and the price. And that's the things like when we we want to find when you look at our knife business. Like one at the time, I, I was always I love to geek out with knives. If it's Emerson or whatever it is, you always love to see the knives, and and especially in this world, like. One of our best selling knives, I was always amazed, is like this like twenty dollar knife. I'm like, why is this our how is this our you know best the, selling like why is this doing this? And then when you start talking to EMTs and they're like, Oh and you ask them like, How come you guys how many of these he's like, Oh, I, I have like four of these in my bag at all times. You're like, I buy four of these a, they're like, You buy four of these a month? He's like, Oh, you know, random through I'm like, So why are you buying so many? He's yeah. like, Well, you know, gotta cut someone out of a car, gotta cut their pants off, I gotta do all this stuff and he's like, At the end of the day it's twenty bucks and it's a great knife. I don't feel bad if it just goes in the hazmat bag and I don't ever have to clean it. I'm not going to clean this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so it's a little functional, you know, and the same thing, uh -huh. and, and stuff here, like, it's, it's just great functional gear that just, just really works well. Yeah, yeah. so this, uh, I've given this to my guys, the, the double duty pin. I like this guy here for the guys on video. Really good. Yeah. You can and then, uh, get it all the way in there. This little, uh, <laughs> this little tracker wallet. I bought this for a buddy recently. Their new, your wallets are actually really cool. Um, I didn't see it there, but I have one that's like a card holder, but it has a little money clip on the outside. Mm -hmm. That's like a go-to for yep. me. Sure. But got the money clip. Um, and then t-shirts. I have a bunch of these in white and tees. black t-shirts, yeah. just the basics. Live in them. Uh, yeah. They're fantastic. The yeah. utility is a great one too because that that's actually a t-shirt with a story that it's actually the body's a little bit longer, so if you need to tuck it in, it can. It's not your. Oh, you know, uh, it's just like not like normal t-shirt length. Shirt. Right, right. It's, so yeah, it's the idea uniform. that you don't get the plumber's crack or you yeah, can touch, tuck it in or it, or even if it help with concealed, like it. It's it makes it that much easier. And I will say, which what we haven't talked about yet is the undergarments man the sock what well, we did touch on the socks and the underwear are the best socks and undies that i have been rocking I'm sure we have and i'm sure well we have the mission this room the, uh, this mission control brief here yet i don't know if we have it yet There's yeah a, the mission control brief is okay coming out real soon if it's not out already we might not have mission in the store. control brief. we might not have it in the store here because yeah. When we have a hot item, like sometimes the store gets stiffed and they don't get all the hot <laughs> all items. All the hot stuff. So um, this is the one, guys, the 511 Trans Dry with Copper Crew Sock. I bought a pair of these and I went home, I wore them the next day, and I was like, I'm going to try this copper thing out and see if this really works. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, I threw every pair of socks away I had. Yeah, like I came all back I here. Outfit for probably a month or two, every you know, XL pairs you had, I was just like <laughs> take them and then 
you know, the one of the girls that worked here had my number. She'd be like, "We got more socks in." I'm like, "Cool, I'm away." And I just I bought tons of them, both in the long and the the smaller uh, yeah. the, the crew, and um, not the crew, the not long socks. They're definitely the and, ones uh, I like. These are the bomb, and then I do have a couple pairs more. of these just because mm -hmm. they're sort of fun. Yeah, but they're um, comfortable too. And they're, you know, good little dress sock. They got a lot of fun little things, and I think I have your American flag ones too to be super annoying on like the Fourth of July guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> be that guy. That's what's up, man. Yeah. So, I mean, really, what kind of what I wanted to commend you guys on is just creating a bunch of gear that really shatters. Um, the whole stigma of you know it being so one-dimensional to wear 511 stuff and is like literally no longer relevant you know like I'm 10 22 I got a 511 shirt pants socks and undies on and <laughs> this is how I'd be rocking it yeah. rolling like all the time with clients everyone's happy um, I feel like I look good and I'm here in the civilian world doing what I do on a daily basis so uh, that was like kind of what got me excited about being like how is 511 relevant to the executive protection compartment of private security and I just want to commend y'all because you guys have done a great job that, yeah, that it's a really doing that you. stuff bringing some gear home but it's it's because it's because <laughs> of feedback yeah, um, from yeah. yourself and it's, yeah. it's a the bad guys evolve every day, yeah. so the good guys got to beat them to it. And yeah. there's no shortage of work for us to do. And then there's this fine line of like, you know, a secret pocket is not a secret pocket when you put it on the internet. But, you know, <laughs> right. we hope you find them. We hope you come in this store and you interact with this product, like we're saying. Heck yeah! And the functionality is just like, hopefully, the functionality overrides all that, and you're just like, heck yeah! Yeah, like for these, you know? yeah. right? I dig it, man. Yeah, it's That's a it's a really it's amazing team effort. Like, I, I, like from design, development, and from like all compat like all the parts coming together. Like, it's a it's a really cool team effort to make. Because at the end of the day, we're making the gear for those guys and ladies that do, you know. They go above and beyond. I mean, that's really and truly what a lot of people, like right. what our, our guy does. So it's, it's kind of, it's a really, it's a, it's a cool place to work. It's right. Really, and it's a cool kind of thing to work on because it's mm -hmm. not just your fashion clothes. Like, oh, you're you know, not like cool guy stuff. Yeah, like I mean, you could be at like a surf brand or a skate brand around here, and you're making, you know, the hot colors pink this year. And we're trying <laughs> to make, you know, what's cool for a minute. And uh, you know, I, I worked in that industry for a really long time, and 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 when coming over here, you just find like a whole level of kind of like, oh, like. Uh, you get more people are more psyched in this gear every day. Like every year, it's more and more people are coming back. Like, oh, like, like, I love the jeans. I love this. I love that. And and it's functional. And like guys get home, and you guys, you know, guys get home from work at the end of the day, like in one piece. And like we help to kind of get you through that day. We make it more comfortable. We made your life a little bit safer. Like, it's a it really, it's a, it's a, it, it's it's really fulfilling in a, in a yeah. lot of ways. And thanks so much for keeping the uh, bottom line in mind, you know, because there's a yeah. lot of really good gear out there, but it's like it's, you gotta have a good a lot of coin to be able to dump into it. Right, know? right, yeah. If you're not, yeah. if it's, the DOD's not buying for you, I don't know how you afford <laughs> some of that stuff we look online. I'm, it's I, hard for us too because we want to put the 50 pounds into the 10 pound bag, but yeah, it's, yeah. There's a finesse to that too. Right. Yeah. Okay. Good to go. Well, do you have any safe rounds? Any no, guys? just like I second what he said. Thank you. Yeah, no, literally. Thank asked. you. Thank you. Um, and uh, you know, you guys have been great to my team. Yeah. You've been great. You've been great to me. And um, you know, it's. Uh, I feel like your brand has a lot of integrity, which is rare today. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you're not just going after. You're not chasing a hype or a fad. Or I even feel that the people you support. You know, like. Like a guy like Kyle or a guy like Tim, and, and yeah. getting input from guys like that, like that's a brand I want to be associated with, you sure. know. And I'm not a logo-y guy. I'm wearing everything 511 right now. I don't think you'll see one logo, but you know, I uh, I appreciate the brand, and and that's why, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. a it seems like it's a whole team effort, and I've been fortunate enough to meet you know guys like Eric, and you know, knowing Tom when Tom was here, um, you know, and, and meeting the people that worked for him through him, you know. That just, uh, it was cool in what little small way I could be a part of it. It was cool to be a part of it and to see it. So just uh, thank you for making the gear you do and please don't keep it up. Yeah, yeah. It's still happening. Come on by. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, every time I, he, he, he came into my office a week I ago with his new jacket, he's like, 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm like, oh, I'm like oh, I just want you, you to know. Right? I'm like, what's that? He's like, I just, you know, have you seen? I just want you to. I know it's hot out, but I want you to know. You know what I'm saying? I got this first. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. It just, you yeah. know, He's done it multiple times. Like, <laughs> I have. Oh, I gotta go back to five eleven. Literally, you guys like, are trying to like see, claim it first. So, like, <laughs> exactly. I, I spit on his mind. Pre yeah, pretty soon you guys can get into fights. But like, hey, first of all, my oh. jacket's my jacket. I'm wearing Tuesdays and Thursdays. I had to buy him with these boots. I was like, oh. Yeah, he, he was just was, like, I was like, okay, like, okay, and then he showed me the knife pocket, and I was like, oh, whoa, yeah, up. so, heck yeah, gents, well, thanks so much for ha coming thank and hanging you. and talking with us, man, I appreciate, appreciate you, thank you, guys. Thank you so and, much. you know, we'd be around, we'd be doing our thing, um, and y'all, come to the Protector Symposium <laughs> this, this November 15th and 16th in Riverside, California, we're gonna have some awesome speakers there, and we're gonna take our protection game to the next level, so, Look for that. Come to that. Boom. And if you haven't already, get your tickets for the Protector Symposium. The first annual Protector Symposium is taking place in Riverside, California, November 15th and 16th. We've got an all-star lineup of seriously elite trainers, Yosef Badu, Ed Caldrone, and Mike Pannone are all going to be there teaching and instructing us on well, our common goal, how to make good people more dangerous. So no matter what your background is, you're going to learn skills around the one unifying principle of protection. Get your tickets. Uh, spots are going quickly. And remember, you're going to get over $100 worth of value back in different things that you're going to get from our sponsors with your purchase of a ticket. Check the website out, Byron Rogers Motivation, for ticket information and to learn more. Out. Boom, and to support this podcast, go to executiveprotectionlifestyle.com and contribute to our Patreon account. That Patreon account is what helps me make this podcast possible, contributing to this brand, what we're doing here, making it so that I can bring better guests on, making it so that we can plan more events and just expand the contribution to the private security industry and also to make an America a safer place by teaching people how to protect themselves and the mindset behind that, the lifestyle behind that. You guys are already killing it. One dollar a month. $5 a month, 10 bucks a month, 20 bucks a month, whatever you can do that you know you would probably just lose in the mattress anyway or spend on McDonald's. Hey, you want to put it towards something that's going to good use? Put it towards a podcast and get involved in our, our Patreon account at executiveprotectionlifestyle.com. And if you want to find me, that's byronrogersmotivation.com. Um, you know, do whatever you can, contribute whatever you can to that Patreon account because it makes all of these things possible, ladies and gentlemen. So much love. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and thank you for making those contributions. You guys rock. We're already doing amazing there, and it's just because of you guys. So thanks once again for those contributions. Boom. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of Executive Protection Lifestyle Podcast. This whole entire thing actually just started off as a Facebook group that blew up and is one of the fastest growing, if not the fastest growing executive protection uh, Facebook group online. So if you haven't joined the Facebook group, join the Facebook group. Uh, follow us on Instagram and check us out at executiveprotectionlifestyle.com. If you want to find me, that's Byron Rogers Motivation. Dot com and I'm on all the social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook as well. So until the next podcast, y'all, stay sharp out there. And as I say it, one mind, many weapons. Talk soon. Out. <laughs>